Welcome back to MUTV News Special Election Show. We see campaign ads everywhere, and they're an important part of winning an election. But do they have a positive effect or a negative effect? Take a look. Only true conservative for the U.S. From the positive to the negative. Terrell Clark, just another hypocritical politician. To the bilingual. Las familias latinas merecen un senador que trabaja para ellos. To the downright violent. And I'll take dead aim at the cap and trade bill because I'll bring the axe to Washington. Campaign ads are everywhere, and there is no doubt that they grab the attention of voters. But during the 2010 midterm election, just how effective are these campaign ads? I think a lot of voters make up their mind fairly early. Those ads would be more effective for people who yet still haven't made up their mind until the 11th hour. Dr. Joyce Wolberg of the Diedrich College of Communication discussed whether more campaign ads means more votes. Uh, it's not that the, the more ads that are there, the, necessarily the more votes, but what happens is strategically a candidate is afraid to pull back if, the, if their opponent is still advertising. And so, um, you know, you have this continuous high level of advertising if they still have funds. But do these campaign ads sway young voters? I mean, not really. I mean, I kind of already know what I'm for. Um, I definitely noticed the campaign ads and I've noticed everything around the campus. The election atmosphere peaks towards the end of October. And with advertisements coming left and right, do voters get annoyed? I think the annoyance factor is very high. I think it's it's even more annoying when campaign ads lie about the other candidate. Negative ads are a popular weapon for candidates, but do they work in favor or against them? A lot them? of voters don't really like negative ads. They find them offensive, um, but I think that the uh, I think historically we've seen some results come about as a, you know, for using negative ads, and so there's a perception that they do work. Do students prefer positive ads over negative ads? I do prefer positive ads over negative ads because you can take a shot at somebody without degrading who they are um, as a person and as a candidate. Positive ads work, in my opinion, way better because negative ads is kind of, to me, it's the end of last resort. If somebody's losing, they have to resort to attacking the person that's beating them rather than presenting their own ideas. Over the last decade, campaigning has gone over dramatic evolution with the arrival of new technologies. But what's in store for the future of campaigning? I think the social media is certainly here to stay in one form or another. Um, you know, maybe something else is new on the horizon that replaces something uh, of, of the older form, but I think some form of social media is always going to be here and that's going to be important. Although we may not know where campaigning is headed, we know where it's been. A major turning point in campaigning came in 1952 with a catchy tune. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner, beat the drum, we'll take Ike to... All right, so right now, 8% of the precincts in Milwaukee are reporting their votes, and it seems that Scott Walker and Ron Johnson are in the lead with 58% of the vote. And so really, you know, looking at the beginning, it looks like we're starting to uh, have some Republican uh, coming up towards the front. But again, 8% of precincts reporting, I think it's certainly a good indication. However, we really need to get more numbers in there before we have anything close to definite. So President Obama has been here numerous times to campaign for these candidates. Has... His impact helped at all? I mean, the Democrats are behind right now in the polls. They've been behind the whole time. You what does this mean for Obama? I, I think it depends on how you look at it. I feel like any time you bring in a major political figure like him, you, you really have a, a very polarizing effect, whereas you either love Obama or you can't stand him, and so that can really you know, make the effect of how people are going to vote. It's true. So what does this mean for the GOP if it takes over? You know, I think for the GOP it means them getting a lot more of their policies in place. Obviously Obama has you know, come on with a lot of different things that he's tried to bring to the table and I think that it's going to make things much more difficult for him, especially in regards to things like health care reform, that sort of thing, to, to get that pushed through just if we are looking at that House majority that they're going for. Now there's been a shift the, with the Tea Party. Mm -hmm. It seems that career politicians like Russ Feingold and you know 
all of the Democrats that are, are losing to common working men who have never been in politics. Are these Tea Party people going to walk into Congress and change the way the government is run? You know, I think that, I don't know that they're going to completely change the way that, that the government is going to run, but in another respect, I think that they're going to change the way that people look at politics. And so um, I, I think that that's what we're really going to see in effect, that sort of shift. It'll be interesting to see. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for tonight. Make sure to check out your local coverage tomorrow morning to see who the winners were in the race. Thank you all for joining us, and from all of us at MUTV News, have a good night.